Welcome to Double Fries No Slaw. It is Sunday evening. We transitioned away from the morning stuff. Um, Richie, I feel like I haven't seen you in forever. It's been a week since we've done this. It's been a week since I've gone live. Even even Solo haven't gone live uh, for a week. So it feels good to be back with everybody. If you're watching this, if you're listening to this, hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, and do us a favor and share this. But Richie, how you been last week? I feel like I haven't seen you in forever. Good, man. Like we had a uh, Thanksgiving and I feel like, you know, obviously we beat the Gators, which is what we wanted to do to end the season. Um, I had my mother-in-law here for eight straight days and we somehow survived that, but it's been pretty good. You know, it's been a good week and I'm just excited to, you know, we're going bowling TJ and I never thought I'd be so excited for a non new year six bowl game, but here we are right now. Uh, but I do think it's warranted the excitement for all Florida State fans this year to be excited about a bowl game, especially against a big name opponent. And we're going to get into it. But yeah, playing a big name opponent in my backyard. I, I could not be happier. Yeah, no, I'm I'm super excited. Um, you know, it was a great year for FSU. And we'll talk about that. Yeah. We'll grade the season a little bit later in the show. But um yeah, I mean, bowl season isn't what it used to be. I, I, I've I've said that a, a, a quite a bit, and um, yeah, don't don't mean to be negative on bowl season, but I think when you have a year that's better than expected, or when you surprise some people and you finish it very positively, and then you get into bowl season and you're playing a big brand, I think that's really exciting. I think we've got a lot to kind of take away there when we talk about bowls in just a minute. I, I think there's a lot to be excited for, and the chance to get to ten wins, double up last year's win total. I think that's really, really good stuff. So, again, do us a favor. Hit that share button, thumbs up, like, and we'd love to answer some questions in the comments. Of course, you can always use the super chat function. We'll answer some stuff that's in there now. Let me give a quick shout-out to Guthrie's in Tallahassee. You can visit both their locations at 1818 West Tennessee Street and 2550 North Monroe. They partnered with some FSU athletes, Lauren Burroughs from the uh, volleyball team, uh, Christina Roque, Lauren Flynn, and Clara Robbins this semester as some uh, NIL Guthrie's athletes. So if you go through and say, mention any of those girls' names or just mention the Double Prize Nose Law podcast sent you and get a free drink with your meal. So shout out to Guthrie's. Appreciate their support. Uh, Got to have to figure out a way to get them to Orlando for the uh, for the game nice. in a few weeks, Richie. Um, but let's jump into it. Also, quick shout out. I, you know, I talked about this on the last show or something or, or so. I am drinking an SOF for Patriots beer it's the four patriots american brewing uh portion of everything you buy goes back to our special ops and our um disabled veteran owned brewery um they do a lot to support our military and then um pd kfc so pd kfc everybody knows kfc this has nothing to do with chicken but uh pedal driven kayak fishing charters my guy courtney was out there at the tailgate hopefully you guys got a koozie that's what i'm drinking uh, tonight richie i don't know what you're sipping on but if you're if you're in the Tallahassee area, going to be in the Tallahassee area, check out it's www.pdkfc.com. Um, private tours, pedal driven kayaks, really good fishing charters. I'm excited to get up and, and do mine in January. Should be good stuff. So, all right, Richie, what are you drinking tonight? I got uh, so we're, we're big fans of Cooper Sock. So uh, we had our wine tasting today, and we got our Cooper oh, Sock boy. Cabernet. I I think I've actually got the Shiraz today. So uh, anyone who's familiar with Cooper Sock knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. So, all right, let's get after it. Florida State plays in a bowl game for the first time in what? Three years? Um, 2020, 2021, 2022. Yeah, it's the first time in yeah. three years. Florida State will play in a bowl against Oklahoma in the Cheez-It Bowl there in Orlando, December 29th, 5.30 p.m. We will be doing a tailgate. So if you're going to be in Orlando, hit us up. Come hang out. We did a huge one for the Florida game. We did a big one for Clemson. Obviously, double fries also. Did a massive one in New Orleans. This one's going to be really big, too. Um, the uh, Clemson, Florida stuff that always a little bit smaller because people have been tailgating in the same spot. I feel like this is our trial run for uh, LSU to open the Ooh, season next trial year. Trial run for my liquor too, uh, or for my liver <laughs> as well. So, um, but yeah, let, we're, we're going to have a good time. But Richie, Oklahoma, a national brand, not a great team. Some people are worried about playing Oklahoma, just, you know, kind of a lose-lose scenario. You beat them, you didn't beat anybody good. You lose to them, you lost to us. What are your thoughts on the matchup against Oklahoma? I'll tell you what, TJ, man, th there was an outside chance heading into the uh, championship weekend that we could have gone to the Cotton Bowl and got stuck with Tulane or UCF, right? I'd much rather be in Orlando 
in a much less prestigious bowl game, but playing a national brand, right? Because Oklahoma still is Oklahoma. And the fact that Brent Venables is the head coach and he's tore our heart out so many times when he was at Clemson, I cannot wait for this game. And it seems like pretty much everybody's going to play. I, I've not heard anybody sitting out. Jared Verse is kind of on the fence a little bit. We'll see what happens. I, I hope he plays because if he does, man, I like us a lot. But I, th- this is a game that could be like a 55 to 48 type game. Like it, it's 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 going to be a lot of offense and not a lot of defense, in my opinion. But yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, I, I do think it's cool and it's kind of special for Florida State to, to play that national brand. Um, yeah. And, you know, I don't know. I just don't think I would have been super thrilled with, like, Texas Tech in this position, no, right? Like, no. you just kind of saw that. Yeah. There were some projections. And, okay, so I take projections, you know, by some people about as far as you can throw them. Um, they were projecting Maryland and Minnesota and the Duke's Mayo Bowl, oh, both the Gator Bowl and the Cheez-It Bowl pick before the Mayo Bowl. So for two Florida Bowls to, to not pick us would have been pretty shocking. Um so yeah, I I I don't know. I I but Maryland or Minnesota, that sounds awful as well. Yeah. Um I was happy to get this one. I was I was happy to get a national brand. I was happy to be close to home, something that we can I would not have gone to the Holiday Bowl. I would not no. have gone to Charlotte, although I do like Charlotte. Um I I like playing Oklahoma here. I would have liked playing Texas. Texas would have been a really cool one to me that I, I think I would have really um enjoyed. But this is an opportunity for Florida State to go out and win a game. Like Florida State should win this bowl. And so it's an oppor- opportunity for Florida State to go out and win a game, get to 10 wins, and be a national brand that you do go up against in recruiting from time to time um, all at the same time. So, Richie, you were in school. Were you in school the last time you played? Not the last time you played Oklahoma, but two times ago? No, 09? so uh, – Oh, nine. No, I actually was oh, no, in school. 10, 10, 10. It was 10 and 11, right? Yeah, so no, 2010, uh, I had just graduated in the 09 season, and that 2010 game was a disaster. Yeah. I think it was growing pains for Jimbo, but I was at that 2011 game, and my goodness, that's the most electric I've ever seen in Doak. And I've been to a lot of games at Doak uh, since I went to school in 06, but that nothing will top the, the atmosphere of that 2011 game at Doak. When uh, they got called for back-to-back false starts in the student section, the end zone, it was just amazing. Yeah. And it's unfortunate that, you know, we lost the game and, you know, we lost DJ Manuel that game too, uh, which coincided with losing a few more games back to back to Clemson, Wake Forest, uh, or Wake Forest and Clemson. Oh yeah. Clemson, and Wake Forest. But either way, man, that, that was electric. And I've been waiting for this chance going back to when I was a little kid, TJ, man, I was watching that. Um, I think it was yeah. the orange bowl when Florida yeah. state played Oklahoma and they beat us, and that thing this game with Stu Minnis couldn't play. Just unfortunate. Listen, this is not that Oklahoma team, but if we do go to this game and beat them, I will celebrate like crazy because it's like multiple games of frustration that I can let out on this one game alone. Yeah, no, Florida State won the first ever matchup between Oklahoma and the Knowles, and uh, that was in 1965, well before uh, – Actually, yeah, you don't want to hear this. Well, that was before <laughs> both of my parents were born. Um, actually, now that I am saying it out loud, um, won the very first uh, matchup that was in the Gator Bowl. Ironically, they're in Jacksonville, Florida, yeah. and haven't won since. Lost in '76, lost in '80, '80, '81, and then the three you just mentioned—the ones that we do remember. 2001, where he only scored two points. Rick was going to Georgia there, and then in 10, 11. 11 was a great one, uh, yeah. but one that one that you ended up dropping. And so it's time to get back on the winning side here. And I think the Knowles will have a great opportunity. Again, Oklahoma's offense is really, really good. I think that Florida State will need to be up for this challenge. And, and, and uh, you know, I, I think uh, we, we try not to harp on it so much. And we even, when we harped on it for two minutes, got some negative comments in the chat. But uh, Florida State's defense is going to need to show up here. I do think it's somewhat fortunate. I don't think, like you said, I don't think a lot of guys opt out. I think Jared Verse, even if he goes pro, I think he plays. How many of these um, guys have played in a bowl game, TJ? Like, like not many. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, this yeah, is a like, great opportunity I mean, like for Cooper, a lot of these you know, guys. Yeah. Few, yeah, if you've been on this roster for, you know, if you're a fifth-year guy, fourth-year guy, I don't know. That's a good question. You'd have to go yeah. kind of through. 
have to kind of go through. It's we'll have Mike Ferguson better. figure that out for us. Uh, yeah, check out don'tfriesnoslaw.com for that one. Yeah, that's that's way, way too much. But um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's exciting. It's exciting to be able to stay home. It, there will be a good crowd there. You know, bowl results, I, honestly, you know, I don't, I don't need to undo the first 10 and a half minutes of this podcast that we just did. Bowl results really don't mean anything. You know, it's about going out of a good time. You want to see your guys play well. You want to see guys stay healthy on both sides. There's nothing worse than a bowl game injury on either side. I've seen it happen. I've seen bowl game injuries happen to rivals, and you're just like, oh, man, this is horrible, right? Like, bowl, bowl results really just don't. But it is an opportunity to go out and get 10 wins. And, you know, people asking about recruiting. Yeah, this was the second. I know that, I mean, this is more on the ACC than anything else. But yeah, they're, they're, you know, this is the second most prestigious, and I'll use that like in quotes if you're listening to the podcast later, but this is the second most prestigious ACC Bowl that there is. And so I, I think that that's on the ACC to get better bowls, right? Because this is not a super prestigious bowl. And this was the old champ sports bowl, right? Like it's easy to make the joke and say, oh, cheese it, you know, that's trash or that's, you know, whatever you know that, and that's fine that's that's no problem like i have no issues with people to say that it make the jokes uh but i mean it's the old champ sports bowl right like it's what it's the scissors bowl that florida state played notre dame in a few years you know in 2011 that you just mentioned that season um yeah i mean it's not that big of a deal right like we're you know this isn't bottom of the barrel but yeah like the acc is terrible and trash and so yeah the, the the prestige of the bowl isn't what it maybe could be but um that's on Florida state. I mean, they, they, you know, they've, they finished second in the ACC essentially this year and uh, they have the second best bowl behind the orange bowl, right? Clemson doesn't let's a guy on Twitter say pissed down their leg. Uh, they go to the playoff and, and Florida state goes to the orange bowl. So, um, so anyway, yeah, I, you know, I'm excited for the bowl. Like you said, that pass to green in 2011 was one of the best moments of a loss that I third and 28. Yeah, I know that off was, the top of my head. Yeah, <laughs> it was, it was ridiculous. So, all right, cool. Um, so that's bowl talk. Let's give a quick shout out to Gramco, the Gramco.com. If you need any Delta eight products this holiday season, whether it be uh, gift cards or you want to get some gummies, some orange hard candies, whatever you're looking for, the Gramco.com. You can use DFNS 25 to save 25%. Give them a try today. If you don't like it, you can go to Richie and complain, but you will like it. They're really good stuff. Um, get the gummies in before you have to spend time with your family at Christmas. I promise you it'll make your holidays better. Uh, Thegramco.com, DFNS25. If you haven't ordered yet, give them a try today. Appreciate their support. Or All right, TJ, TJ uh, or, or use them with your family at there. My mother-in-law yeah. just spent eight days here, and my wife, I had to go to bed. I had to be at work early one day and my wife split a gummy with her mom and my goodness, like they were both out and I loved it. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got to stop. I got to, I got to chill on the gummies a little bit, but, <laughs> but uh, okay. So I want to talk with you about this. want to talk about two more things, guys. We're, quick show tonight. We'll probably go for another 15, 20 minutes and we'll get out of here again. If you're watching, make sure you thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you're watching this now, there's dozens on almost up to triple digits Make sure you subscribe. We certainly appreciate that. Richie, let's talk a little transfer portal. Um, the transfer portal goes live tomorrow, and things are going to be wild and yeah. absolutely crazy. Um, let's talk about some targets for FSU. Um, before people go into the, the portal, I don't necessarily know that I want to go down like specific names, but let's talk about some positional targets, some, some positions that you think would – would be good for FSU to go after. Um, yeah, let's do that. I'll let you go first. We'll go back and forth. I love your Christmas tree in the background, by the way. If you're not watching on, if you're listening to this podcast later, join us on Sundays and watch this live on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash C slash double fries, no slaw. But Richie, what's your number one target? I think Florida State's going to be able to be more selective in the transfer portal this year. I think yeah. that they've had, they've done a really, really good job. Um, building out the depth of this roster. And I don't think they'll have to go as portal heavy as they have the last couple of years, but I do think they'll take a few guys anywhere, probably between five and 10. Um, what's your number one position of need in the portal this upcoming cycle? So, so that's dependent on Jared verse, because if he does leave, we need an edge rusher. That's an automatic number one if he does leave. And I think he probably should. Like, I would love him to come back selfishly. But for his sake, I think he probably should go. 
So with that said, I would say offensive tackle. The problem is everybody wants offensive tackles, and I don't know how easy that's that will be to get one in the portal. But yeah, if Jared Verse stays, you're good. But if he leaves, I, I'd say defensive end. If he does leave like I expect he will, I think offensive tackle. So I'll flip it and I'll 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 okay. So not disagree, but I'll go in a different direction. I think you have some pieces there at defensive end that won't make the same impact as Jermaine and Jared have, but I really like Pat Payton. I really like some of the pieces you have there. I think you need somebody on the interior of the defensive line. You're gonna yeah. lose Fabian Lovett. You're going to lose Robert Cooper. And so I think that that interior of the defensive line could be a position that Florida State really needs to go after. You do get to Fossey, um, who didn't play this year, but will be eligible next year and will play. So that will help. You've got some depth there. But you saw the difference that this defense – you saw the difference in this defense when Fabian Lovett was there and wasn't there. And he's not going to be there next year. <laughs> so uh, as much as we'd love to have him back, he is not going to be there next year. And so I, I think you need a guy with Fabian's floor. I think you need a guy that is of that level because when he was out, Florida State's defense was just not the same. And so I would go inside. I don't just, I don't necessarily, I don't want to call it a disagreement. I'd say it's like just as important though. Yeah. I just think there's more like, there's a chance that Pat Payton could just like shock you and have like a monster year. Shout out to Pat Payton, ACC rookie, defensive rookie of the year. Yes, sir. He could he could go off, and and I do think if he doesn't next year, he will the year after. Like the year after, he's going to be that guy. And so it's kind of nice to know, like, hey, 2024, we got that guy coming up. If he's not, you know, that guy, which I think he's going to be very good in 23. I just don't know that he's going to be first round draft pick good in, you know, like the like the last two guys at that position have been. So I'll go inside. I like your call on the offensive line. I, I, I agree. I just, I don't know how many offensive tackles are out there and, and how much you're going to be able to find. Um, you want it next or you want me to snake it back? You want me to go take for it. another one? Or you, you take want it. it. Let's, let's go fantasy footballs here. All right. My second one is in the secondary. We, I, I'm not breaking any news here, but you lose Sam McCall to the transfer portal. Um, I think you need secondary help. I think Renardo Green had a good season for you. I think that Greedy Vance did a good job kind of in that nickel-ish position. You, you know, you'll get Cooper back. I, I don't think Kevin Knowles had a great, great year. That, that was a miss by me. I, I said that I thought he'd have a really good year. Um, in our bold predictions, I think I had him down for three picks. He had one. Uh, but he he wasn't great. Jarian Jones will be there. Um, you'll have Thomas. I, I think you need somebody in the secondary it might be in that safety position because you are going to lose Jamie Robinson. I was listening to another podcast. Shout out to Noel Cast, Ingram and Bud do a great job. Jamie Robinson had took more played more snaps than any other defensive player um, on the team. And that's going to be a lot to replace because he was really, really good. So I think helping the secondary, preferably to me, the safety position, just because I don't think it's as deep. I don't really know what Akeem Dent's going to do. I, I don't know that he's tr truly uh I don't know that he gets drafted. I don't know that he played well enough and was healthy enough down the stretch to get drafted. So you may get him back. You may get Shaheem Brown back, you may get Sydney back, but I think you probably need a safety, maybe a guy that can play a little bit of both, but I think safety would be my, my pick there in the secondary. What about you? Yeah, I agree. Like the secondary needs help. And I, partially wonder is it the secondary or is it the coaching of the secondary i don't know that's probably another topic for another podcast but tight end man you gotta get a tight end Cam mcdonald shout out him he really came on towards the end of the season but you gotta find somebody who can mike norvell loves tight ends go back to his tape at memphis and arizona state that, that that's a position he wants to utilize he just hasn't had the players to do it and I think if he can get a true tight end, like the guy from Shorter University right now, man, like that's a position that I think could really take this offense to the next level, especially if Jordan Travis comes back like I personally expect him to. Yeah, I think tight end would be great. I think, you you know, you're obviously going to get Marquise in back who flashed for you at times, but yeah, I think a tight end would be huge. You're spot on there. And then that's when I'll bring up 
I'll flip back to one you've already said. And and I think this might round it out. You know, if you if you if you had a stud linebacker that you thought was really, really good, you, you may go there if you, you know, had some other positions. Also, the other thing on defensive end, which if you can get an impact guy like they had the last couple of years, they've recruited that position fairly well. Like you've yeah. got boots coming in. You've got Keldrick Falk, who's committed now. I know there's been smoke and rumors. Four star walk on. Like, yeah, think about that. If you, if if you, if, if you continue that recruiting class really, really well, like you have, like I think you you'd be pretty good. But yeah, then I'll echo what you said. I think a, a guard or a tackle would be really big. I don't know if Caden Lyles comes back. I think that they can get him back if he wants to, but he's had a few injuries, derail a few seasons in a row. I, I don't know if that's something that he wants or not. I actually spoke with him about it, and, and when I spoke with him, he wasn't he wasn't decided one way or the other. Obviously, you lose Dylan Gibbons. Um, you got some young guys that are coming in. I, I think Armella could be ready to 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 give you some burn next year. But as you saw this year, Florida State's deep. Uh, you know, you lose. Um, don't you lose Jazz? Like Jazz was just a one year guy anyway. Um, so your your defensive or your offensive line. Uh, basically sustained all the injuries they could, right? Like you, you lost Bless, you lost Caden early, um, and then you basically had one injury to play with. Like if Jazz or or uh, Maurice went down, like you could move some guys around. Not uh, no, Mo Smith couldn't have gone down. Yeah, if if uh, Washington would have gone down, like he was kind of able to plug and play, but you were kind of at your limit, and so you can never take too many offensive linemen. I think that having another uh, guard or obviously a tackle would would be great but tackle is just pretty limited so getting some kind of offensive lineman or maybe even two in the portal would would be huge for the Knowles. um that probably wraps it up i and that's what's cool i you know if you have another one i'll let you do another position but quarterback don't need to take anybody if jordan comes back obviously uh running back that room is loaded wide receiver i think that room is loaded and getting better with the High school guys that are coming in. Linebacker, again, I don't think you really have to have a linebacker. Um, so last year, I think we were at a point where, like, every position, every room, we were like, oh, I got to take somebody, got to take somebody. You know, like, <laughs> and we did. We took guys in every single room. This year, I don't think you really have to do that. I think that you, you've you seen the the floor rise significantly under Norvell, um, go both the one and two deep. And, you know, it's a credit to him and the, and the people that he's brought in. So, um I mean, I don't think there's anything else. Is there anything else I'm leaving out? That you uh, think nothing of mine, no, unless like uh, a Tatum Bethune leaves early, which I, I think he should come back and probably will, because I don't know that his measurables match up to the NFL. Uh, but I think he'll be a damn good linebacker in the NFL too. But I, I do think he comes back. So I think that kind of covers it all. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think, you know, you, you've got a chance to – I don't know. Am, am I am I a little too uh, – am I drinking a little too much Kool-Aid here? Like, I think you've got a really solid core, and you've got a chance to really kind of make a run at things next year. I think you need to – it isn't. It will be important to, to beat LSU to start the year. Um, but you, you beat LSU to start the year. Man, that ACC schedule sets up really favorably. You're you've talking got, playoff, yeah, yeah you've, at that point. You've got a, a an offense that's one of the best in the country. I think the defense does need to take a step forward, especially with some of the guys that we think we may lose or know that we're going to lose. Fabian, Robert, um, you know, Jamie, and potentially Jared as well. So there does need to be a step forward taken by the defense to to get a little bit better there. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it is nice to kind of go into the transfer portal season and know what you know, kind of know what you really need, know what you could get by with without and then know what positions are pretty locked up and, and pretty solid. So, uh, no, it's it's somewhat refreshing there. So, all right, let me give one more shout-out, and then we will do our last segment of the night, and we'll get out of here. If you have good questions um, and you're not just a troll in the in – the, in the, uh, you mind talking about your schedule next year? All right, so we were just on that. I'll talk about the schedule real quick. Uh, FSU 2024 football – or 2023 football schedule. Yeah, I think it sets up pretty nicely for the Knowles. You have LSU oh, – no. <laughs> Say what? I said 12 and 0. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Well, maybe 15 and 0. So you have LSU to start the year. Uh, I think that, you know, that's going to be another tough fought game. I Hopefully it doesn't come down to a PAT unless we're the ones kicking it for the win because then I like us. But uh, yeah, LSU to open the year in Orlando. FSU bookends Orlando. Ends the year this year there. Starts the year next year there. 
Uh, then you got Southern Miss the next week. Obviously, Florida State should win that game. Your rivalry games have flopped, right? So or flipped. You go to Florida and to Clemson. You play Miami at home, and then your conference games, which obviously Clemson and Miami are conference games. Your conference games, I also think, set up pretty favorably. Yeah. You're at BC, who uh, you know, Jerkovic and Flowers are both going from there. Uh, you you play Syracuse at home. I really like the Knolls in that game. You play at Wake Forest, who loses about. 372 seniors. Uh, you played Duke, who was kind of an upstart team this year, but I still think you are the favorites there, especially with that game at Dope Campbell. You play Virginia Tech at Dope Campbell, who is probably the worst team in the ACC. And then you go to Pitt, which I think that the game at Pitt, hopefully that's earlier in the year. I think that could be tricky. Uh, and then the week before Florida, you play North Alabama, um, the Lions. And so you got a couple of out-of-conference games that you'll certainly win. I think, honestly, if, if you could – if you could split with LSU and Florida, um, and then your only other loss should maybe be Clemson, you know, and we'll see what Clemson looks like then. I mean, you're looking at, I, I think to me, you're looking at a great chance at nine and three, 10 and two. If you can overachieve there and you're somehow looking at 11 and one, maybe you beat Clemson or maybe you beat both SEC teams like you did this year. Um, then I, I think you you know you you could be talking about the playoff at that point. I think Florida State will have an excellent chance um, to finish second in the ACC. I think that most ACC teams. It was a very senior heavy ACC this year with Hartman gone and NC State losing some guys, Jerkovic leaving. I, I think that it's going to be your top three is is probably going to be Clemson, Florida State, and North Carolina, and. Uh, Florida State's schedule sets up slightly easier than North Carolina's does. And so if Florida State can sneak into that second spot, you may get a rematch with Clemson in the ACC championship. And uh, that could be a lot of fun. So that's a really early look at the schedule. That's on paper in 2022. We'll see how it all sets up later. But yeah, I think on paper, the schedule does set up easier than it was this year. And so, yeah, if Florida State's second in the ACC with the three-pod system, You'll go to the um, ACC championship. If you're ten and two going to that ACC championship, and you beat Clemson, your only other loss is maybe to an LSU team who should be pretty good again next year. Yeah, I think you'd 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 be talking about the Knolls, maybe trying to find a way to sneak in. Maybe they'd be just outside. Maybe that'd be a New Year's Six type thing. But then, yeah, the next year in 2024, I think that's good for a playoff spot. So, um. All right, let me now give this shout out to Garnet and Gold. If you're an FSU fan, you're already shopping for FSU gear this holiday season. You need to be shopping at Garnet and Gold. Two reasons. One, they give back to FSU and its athletes. They literally give back to the boosters and they literally give back. They take losses on things to give back to our athletes through NIL. Number two reason, we can save you some money. If you use code NOSLAW, N-O-S-L-A-W, at checkout, you can save 15% on your order. There's no limit. If you're buying 20 things and you spend $1,000 at Garden Gold, they'll take off $150. So 15% off your order at garnetandgold.com. Use code NOSLAW, N-O-S-L-A-W. They are family-owned and operated. Don't shop at the big, huge stores. They get all the money. Shop at the people that give back to the university. Shop at the folks that give back to our athletes through NIL. That's garningold.com. Again, no slaw. N-O-S-L-A-W. Shout out Paul Clifton in the comments. It's long overdue that we beat Clemson. You're absolutely right. It's time. You had them close last year. No, it's time. Close again this year. I You're going to have <sighs> – that kid looks good. That Clemson kid looks good. Uh, but Jordan's better. So, yeah, I agree. It's time time to beat them. So if Jordan comes back, we beat Clemson next year. Market, timestamp, bookmark, whatever you want to call it. If Jordan comes back, we beat Clemson next year. In Death uh, Valley. And I will be there. I, I was talking, Kara was just asking me the other day. She was like, hey, what, what games are you going to, not going to? And I was like, well, I'll probably go to the, I mean, I'm definitely going to Orlando. Uh, and then I'm, I'm definitely going to Miami. So there's two. And I'll, I'll probably go to the Florida game because it's so close. We're only an hour and a half from Gainesville. Yeah, but I was like, man, I kind of want to go to the Clemson game. I kind of want to do that. So, anyway, yeah, we will do a tailgate up there, Richie. That'd be a fun one. Game yeah. day will be there. Let's do it. If Miami didn't suck, they may actually be there. That's funny that the game day may actually be yeah. on the floor, depending on where it falls on the schedule. I got there. Hey, you got to be LSU, right? And I think we can because 
as good as LSU is and they improved this season, I, I do think they did. Nah, man, we're better than LSU if Jordan comes back. That that's the key qualifier. And I think he does. I, I'm I'm just saying, don't be surprised if he announces in the next week that he's coming back to Florida State. So I can't flip the ESPN schedule ahead to next year yet. Like it just won't, like it won't let you. But I kind of wonder, could LSU Florida State could be a top 10 matchup next year? I think we top 15, probably not top 10. I think top 15 is fair. I think if we win, I think there's a chance we're top 10. I just don't know if they will be or not. I don't know if LSU will be though. I think we, I think we'll be like number nine preseason. I just don't know about LSU because that, Man, I watched that game yesterday. They're not on that level. They're not on that level right now. To be fair, though, nobody's on that. I mean, I don't think anybody's on that level. So, you know, next year to start the year, Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, Alabama, probably USC. See, here's the, here's the thing I don't – probably USC. But, like, Utah loses a lot. I think they'll drop. Yeah. Tennessee without Hooker, they'll drop. Yeah. Florida State will be up there, right? Like, I'm not saying number six, but, like, here, I'm just putting teams out. Yeah. T- TCU, TCU might be up there, but, like, I don't know. Do they – I don't know if they were. They're just solid, man. They're just solid. It's crazy. So, like, there's TCU. So, you're looking at, like, LSU. Can they jump ahead of, like – okay, so, like, let's put Clemson up there. There's eight teams. Yeah. You're looking at LSU with, like – okay, so you've got Utah, Kansas State, USC – Penn State, Washington, LSU. Not impressed with. I don't know. I think LSU could yeah. be ahead of most of those teams. They like, would beat be them all. Washington. They would beat them all. For being yeah. Honest. So and you know the SEC bias. So I think there's. I bet you're right. It might be like nine twelve or nine thirteen or something like that. But um, but a, a top fifteen matchup in week one. That's massive. Like I, I'm pumped. I'm already like planning everything out. Like. Man, I, I need to like schedule an Uber driver, even though I only live like seven miles from the <laughs> Camping World Stadium, because I yeah. cannot wait for this. Yeah, no doubt. So, um, okay, let's. Uh, I was gonna. We were gonna grade some. Uh, we'll we'll save that for next week. We we've got yeah, plenty of time. We're good here. <laughs> we've already gone over thirty minutes, so I don't want to. I want to say some. We've got some off season content coming. That'll be a lot of fun. Make sure again, if you're watching this, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Thumbs up the video. Let's go through a couple questions and see if I can find anything that's really good in here. Uh, man, this game is a lose-lose. If FSU wins, we should win. If OU, if we lose, it doesn't help. I don't know. I I don't think it's a lose-lose. Bowl Again, don't matter bowl, anymore. Yeah. bowl results, I, I honestly, like, it, to me, it's a bowl res- are a win-win. Unless you're playing, like, so when Florida lost to UCF, like, that was, but even then, like, they they got a new coach. Who, yeah, who like, cares? It didn't affect yeah. them in recruiting. They're recruiting well. I, I just think bulls are a win-win. You win, you get to say your record is better. You lose, it doesn't matter. Um, it's, it's, it only it's only important for preseason rankings next year, which is why yeah, I really want to win this matter. bowl game so bad next year or, or this month. Because if we do beat Oklahoma, we're gonna be top ten preseason. Like th- th- there's no doubt about it. Like, and we yeah. might finish the season ranked in the top ten in the AP and coaches poll because the college football playoff poll is done. Yeah. No, I think we finish in the top. Yeah, we definitely finish in the top 10. I think we start next year. Um, let's see here. See if there's anything else. Hunter seems like he might be going. Come to Orlando and then go yeah, to Charlotte. Yeah, text me on the side. I love it, Hunter. Come to Orlando, Hunter. Was at the game in 2011. Obviously, that one was really, really good. Yeah. 16-0 and 0 next year. Or in 2024. Yeah, because we'll have the extra game for the playoff. Yeah. Um, do 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 Great matchup. We had a better year than Clemson. FSU will be ranked high, long overdue. Okay, cool. I think uh, no, we appreciate Master of Dreams hanging out here. I mean, he, he loves the uh, he loves the he loves the internet. He loves hearing about a good team since his stinks. Oh, here's the last thing I had, Richie. Um, how about Florida playing in the in the Las Vegas Bowl on the seventeenth really? on December? Really? Oh, listen, the first day of bowl season is December Wait, they're, 16th. They're playing December 17th. They're playing on the second. So here's the thing. They play in 13 days. What? You're not they, you can't even get so the bowl. I think they give you what 15 practices. You can't even get all 15 practices in. And you're no. also not allowed to go every single day. Plus, the coaches are recruiting. It's beautiful. Beautiful. I think it's a great setup. Where are they playing? Uh Oregon State. Is that what I saw? Oh, they're gonna lose. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. Sure. They're gonna finish with a losing season just like yeah. Miami. That is For hilarious. Sure. Yeah. So oh my goodness. Because yeah. Anthony Richardson's probably not playing in that game. 
a bunch of guys are already opted out. Yeah, there's no chance. I yeah. mean, they're, and they're hitting the portal hard. So, yeah. Um, oh, my God. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, Florida on December 17th. Uh, that's, yeah, Oregon State, the Beavers. Who uh, The Oregon State, did they upset Oregon? Oregon yeah. Yeah. State. Yeah. Yeah, so, that, that's over a week before Christmas is when you're playing your bowl game. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Florida. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Um, I mean, obviously Miami doesn't go to a bowl, but that's funny too. So, all right, Rich, you got any shout outs before we get out of here? Yeah, man. Uh, yesterday, my wife had her holiday work party, and I was drinking like I saw that. Bourbon. Yeah, that's that's three hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> secondary bourbon. You were yeah, with, but man. before that, we went out with our friends uh, Mark and Rachel, who were at our Notre Dame Hill tailgate. They were at our um, LSU tailgate. They're moving to Charlotte, unfortunately, on Tuesday. So shout out Mark and Rachel. They will be back for the LSU game in uh, September, obviously. But uh, I'm gonna miss them, so we saw them again today. We've been out, did a wine tasting at Cooper's Hawk. So shout out to them. That they're, they're my one of my favorite couples uh, that we're friends with. At, right after me and Kara. <laughs> <laughs> no, shout out to them. Safe travels, um, and good luck with the move. Moving sucks. So that yeah, that sounds terrible. But yeah. Uh, yeah, other than that, yeah, Heisman hopeful. Yeah, we'll talk about all that. We we got some stuff coming with that. Yeah, I think Jordan Travis. By virtue of the Florida State starting in the top ten next year, when he officially to announces, we're going to have a conversation. This, yeah, because it's it's legit. It, it is legit. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't have any other shout outs. Shout out everybody that tuned in and watched. We're well over three di- triple digits tonight. Again, shout out you if you watched, if you hung out. Hit the thumbs up button and make sure you subscribe. YouTube gives us stats, and eighty percent of people that watch videos are not subscribed. So hit that subscribe button. You're an FSU fan. We put out FSU content almost daily. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, that's all I got. Richie, appreciate you. Harlan, appreciate you guys uh, for hanging out. We will be back this week with several videos and um, lots of content. We'll go live a couple times, I'm sure. If not, we'll see you guys back next Sunday. Until then, happy holidays and go Knowles.